You might be sitting there thinking, who am I to be a leader? I'm just an average Joe. Every great leader in history started as an average person. The difference? They made a choice. They chose to be extraordinary. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. What does it really mean to talk like a leader? It's not about using fancy words or talking down to people. No, it's about speaking with clarity, conviction, and purpose. It's about saying what you mean, and more importantly, meaning what you say. When you speak like a leader, people don't just hear your words, they feel your energy. They sense your confidence. That, my friends, is how you begin to earn respect. It's not given. It's earned through every interaction, every conversation, every word you speak. Last time you heard someone speak and thought, wow, I would follow that person anywhere. What made them stand out? Was it their expensive suit? Their flashy watch? No, it was the way they carried themselves, the way they spoke with certainty and passion. That's what we're aiming for. It's not about pretending to be someone you're not. It's about becoming the best version of yourself. It's about growing into the leader you were always meant to be. Now let's break it down into five key elements of speaking like a leader. Clarity, confidence, authenticity, empathy. Starting with clarity, when you open your mouth to speak, are your words crystal clear or are they as muddy as a swamp? Leaders speak with clarity. They don't beat around the bush or use 10 words when five will do. They say what they mean, and they mean what they say. Here's a little exercise for you. Next time you're explaining something, imagine you're talking to a child, not because your audience is childish, but because children demand clarity. They will keep asking why until they truly understand. That's the level of clarity you should aim for in your communication. Confidence. This isn't about being the loudest person in the room or bulldozing over others' opinions. It's about believing in what you're saying. It's about standing tall, making eye contact, and speaking with conviction. But here's the secret about confidence that most people don't realize. It's not something you're born with. It's something you build day by day, conversation by conversation. How? By doing the work, by knowing your stuff inside and out, by practicing, by failing, getting back up and trying again. Remember this, every time you speak, you're either building confidence or chipping away at it. The choice is yours. Choose to build it, choose to stand tall, even when you're shaking inside. Everyone feels nervous sometimes. The difference is that leaders push through it. Next up is authenticity. This is a big one, folks. In a world full of phonies and fakes, Authenticity stands out like a beacon in the night. People can smell insincerity from a mile away. So don't try to be someone you're not. Be you, the best version of you, but still you. Share your struggles, share your victories. Let people see the real you. That's what makes a leader relatable. That's what makes people want it to follow you. Because at the end of the day, people don't follow perfect beings. They follow real, authentic humans who have the courage to be themselves. Empathy. This is where a lot of so-called leaders fall short. They're so focused on their own message, their own goals, that they forget about their audience. But true leaders, they connect. They understand. They feel what their audience feels. Before you speak, ask yourself, what does my audience need to hear? What are they worried about? What are their hopes and dreams? Speak to those needs, those worries, those dreams. That's how you connect. That's how you inspire. Lastly, purpose. Every word you speak should have a purpose. Are you trying to inform, to inspire, to call to action? Know your purpose and let it guide your words. Purpose gives your words weight. It gives them direction. It turns a speech into a rallying cry, a conversation into a call to arms respect because that's what we're really after isn't it we want people to respect us when we speak but here's the thing respect isn't given it's earned and it's earned through consistent actions not just words you earn respect by being respectful 
by listening as much as you speak, by valuing others' opinions, even when you disagree, by admitting when you're wrong and learning from your mistakes, you earn respect by being consistent, by doing what you say you'll do, by showing up day after day, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. You earn respect by adding value, by making the lives of those around you better, by lifting others up instead of tearing them down. And here's the beautiful thing. When you focus on earning respect, you become the kind of leader people want to follow. Not because they have to, but because they want to. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. This all sounds great, but I'm not a natural speaker. I get nervous. I stumble over my words. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. Everyone gets nervous. Everyone stumbles sometimes. The difference is that leaders push through it. They prepare. They practice. They put themselves out there even when it's uncomfortable because they know that growth happens outside of their comfort zone. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to practice speaking like a leader every single day. Start small. Maybe it's in a meeting at work. Maybe it's with your family at dinner. Maybe it's just in the mirror. Speak with clarity. Stand tall and speak with confidence. Be authentic, show empathy, speak with purpose. And watch as people start to listen. Watch as they start to respect you. But remember, this isn't about becoming someone else. It's about becoming the best version of yourself. It's about unleashing the leader that's already inside you. You see, leadership isn't a position. It's not a title. It's a mindset. It's a way of being. And it starts with how you speak, not just to others, but to yourself. Are you speaking to yourself like a leader? Are you tearing yourself down? Are you encouraging yourself to grow, to take risks, to become better? Or are you telling yourself you're not good enough? Change that inner dialogue. Speak to yourself like a leader. Encourage yourself. Challenge yourself. Believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, how can you expect others to believe in you? Words, words can build up or tear down. They can inspire or discourage. They can start wars or bring peace. As a leader, your words carry weight. Use them wisely. Choose your words carefully. Are they adding value? Are they bringing people together? Are they moving things forward? If not, maybe they're better left unsaid. And it's not just about the words you say. It's about how you say them. Your tone, your body language, your facial expressions, they all matter. They all contribute to your message. So stand tall. Speak with energy and enthusiasm. Let your passion shine through. Because when you're passionate about what you're saying, others will feel it too. Great leaders aren't just great talkers. They're great listeners too. They listen to understand, not just to respond. They ask questions. They seek out different perspectives. When you truly listen, you show respect. You show that you value others' opinions. And in return, people will value yours. They will respect you for your open-mindedness, for your willingness to learn. So next time someone's talking to you, really listen. Don't just wait for your turn to speak. Absorb what they're saying. Ask questions. Show that you care about their perspective. And here's another tip. Learn to be comfortable with silence. Many people rush to fill every moment with words. But true leaders know the power of a well-placed pause. It gives people time to absorb what you've said. It adds weight to your words. So don't be afraid of silence. Use it. Embrace it. Let your words sink in. If you're going to speak like a leader, you're going to face criticism. It's inevitable. The question is, how will you handle it? Will you get defensive? Will you lash out? Or will you listen? Will you look for the grain of truth in the criticism? Will you use it as an opportunity to grow? True leaders don't fear criticism. They welcome it. They know that feedback is a gift. It's an opportunity to become better. So next time someone criticizes you, take a deep breath. Listen, thank them for their feedback. And then consider, is there something here I can learn from? Is there a way I can use this to become better? And remember, the way you handle 
criticism says a lot about you as a leader. Handle it with grace and humility, and you'll earn respect even from your critics. Great leaders aren't just great speakers. They're great storytellers. They know how to paint a picture with their words. They know how to make their message stick. Think about it. Which do you remember better? A list of facts and figures or a compelling story. Stories stick with us. They touch our emotions. They make us feel something. So learn to tell stories. Share your experiences. Use analogies and metaphors. Make your message come alive. But remember, the best stories are authentic. They're real. They're personal. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Share your struggles as well as your successes. People relate to that. They respect that. And here's another T. We, more than, I, because leadership isn't about you. It's about the people you're leading. It's about the collective journey. So talk about our goals, our challenges, our successes. Make people feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. The importance of continuous learning. Because to speak like a leader, you need to have something worth saying. And that means constantly expanding your knowledge, your skills, your perspective. Read books, listen to podcasts, attend seminars, seek out mentors. Never stop learning. Because the moment you think you know it all, that's the moment you stop growing. And share what you learn. Pass on your knowledge. Because true leaders don't hoard information. They share it. They lift others up. They help others grow. When you share your knowledge, you're not losing anything. You're gaining respect, trust, and loyalty. Leaders set the tone. And people are drawn to positive energy. They want to follow someone who sees possibilities, not just problems. This doesn't mean ignoring challenges or being unrealistic. It means facing challenges with optimism and determination. It means focusing on solutions, not just problems. So watch your words. Are you constantly complaining? Are you always pointing out what's wrong? Or are you focusing on what's possible? Are you inspiring hope? Choose to be positive. Choose to see the good. Choose to focus on possibilities because your attitude is contagious. And as a leader, you want to spread the right kind of contagion. Words without action are just empty promises. And empty promises erode trust. They erode respect. So if you say you're going to do something, do it, follow through. Be a person of your word. Because actions speak louder than words. And consistent action builds trust. It builds respect. And remember, as a leader, people are watching you. They're looking to you as an example. So set the right example. Be the first to arrive and the last to leave. Roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty. Leave from the front, not from behind. Show that you're not afraid of hard work, that you're willing to do what you ask of others. Great leaders know how to make others feel valued. They know how to bring out the best in people. So learn to give genuine compliments. Recognize people's efforts and achievements. Say thank you often and sincerely. Because when people feel appreciated, they will all go the extra mile. They will respect you for valuing them. And here's another tip. Learn people's names. Use them. Because there's no sweeter sound to someone's ears than their own name. It shows you care. It shows you value them as an individual. It's a small thing but it can make a big difference in how people perceive you as a leader. At the end of the day, all the speaking skills in the world won't matter if people don't trust you, if they don't believe in your character. So always, always, always tell the truth, even when it's hard, even when it's not what people want to hear, because trust is the foundation of respect. And once lost, it's hard to regain. Live by your values. Walk your talk. Be consistent in your words and actions. Because integrity isn't about being perfect. It's about being honest, being true to your word, and owning up to your mistakes. It's about doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. That's what builds respect. That's what makes people want to follow you. And speaking of mistakes, let's talk about how leaders handle them. Because you will make mistakes. It's inevitable. The question is, how will you handle them? 
Will you try to cover them up? Will you blame others? Or will you own up to them? Will you take responsibility? Will you learn from them? True leaders admit their mistakes. They apologize when necessary. They make amends. And then they focus on solutions, on moving forward, on doing better next time. Because here's the thing. People respect leaders who can admit when they're wrong. It shows humility. It shows a willingness to learn and grow. And it sets an example. Great leaders don't just focus on the present. They look to the future. They paint a picture of what could be. And they inspire others to work towards that vision. So develop your vision. Where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve? And more importantly, why? What's the purpose behind your vision? And then communicate that vision clearly and passionately. Help others see what you see. Help them feel what you feel. Inspire them to join you on the journey. Because when people buy into your vision, when they're excited about the future you're working towards, that's when magic happens. That's when people give their best. That's when they respect you, not just as a person, but as a visionary. The world is changing faster than ever. And leaders need to be able to adapt, to pivot when necessary, to learn new skills and new ways of thinking. So be open to change. Be willing to challenge your own assumptions, to try new things, to step out of your comfort zone. And when things don't go as planned, because they often won't, don't get discouraged. See it as an opportunity to learn, to grow, to become better, because adaptable leaders earn respect. They show that they can handle whatever comes their way, that they're not stuck in old ways of thinking or doing things. Great leaders know they can't do everything themselves. They know how to leverage the strengths of others, how to build a strong team. So learn to delegate, trust others with responsibilities, give them the authority to make decisions. Because when you empower others, you multiply your impact. You build a stronger, more capable team. When you delegate effectively, when you trust others and help them succeed, they will respect you for it. They will appreciate the opportunity to grow and contribute. They will see that you believe in them and that will motivate them to prove you right. You can't pour from an empty cup. You can't lead effectively if you're burned out, stressed out, or run down. So take care of yourself, physically, mentally, emotionally. Exercise regularly. Eat well. Get enough sleep. Take time to relax and recharge. Practice mindfulness or meditation. Because when you take care of yourself, you show up as your best self. You have the energy, the clarity, the patience to lead effectively, and people respect leaders who can maintain their composure even in the face of adversity. They admire those who can stay calm under pressure, who can think clearly when chaos reigns. But self-care isn't just about physical health. It's about mental and emotional well-being, too. It's about knowing when to step back, when to recharge. It's about setting boundaries and respecting your own limits. Because a burnt-out leader is no leader at all. Remember, by taking care of yourself, you're setting an example for others to do the same. You're showing that self-care isn't selfish. It's necessary for sustained high performance. You're demonstrating that to be truly effective, to be a true leader. You need to be at your best. Great leaders aren't just great speakers. They're great questioners. They know how to probe, to dig deeper, to uncover insights that others miss. Asking the right questions can open up new possibilities, challenge assumptions, and lead to breakthroughs. It shows that you're engaged, that you're interested, that you value others' input, and it helps you make better decisions. So develop the habit of asking thoughtful questions, not just surface level queries, but deep probing questions that get to the heart of the matter. Questions like, what are we not seeing here? What if we approach this from a completely different angle? What's the real problem we're trying to solve? And when you ask these questions, really listen to the answers, show that you value the input. Because when people feel heard, 
when they feel their ideas matter, they will respect you more. They will be more willing to follow your lead. But it's not just about asking questions of others. It's about questioning yourself too. Regularly ask yourself, am I living up to my potential? Am I leading by example? What can I do better? This self-reflection is crucial for growth and continuous improvement. Speaking of continuous improvement, let's talk about the power of feedback. Not just receiving feedback, which we've touched on, but giving feedback too. Because as a leader, one of your key responsibilities is to help others grow and improve. Giving effective feedback is an art. It requires tact timing and genuine care for the other person's development. When done right, it can be a powerful tool for growth. When done poorly, it can demotivate and discourage. So how do you give feedback that inspires rather than deflates? First, make it specific. Vague feedback like good job or you need to do better isn't helpful. Instead, point to specific actions or behaviors. Second, make it timely. Don't wait weeks or months to give feedback. The sooner you can provide it after the event, the more effective it will be. Third, focus on the behavior, not the person. Instead of saying you're lazy, say I noticed you missed the last two deadlines. This keeps the feedback objective and less likely to be taken personally. Fourth, balance positive and constructive feedback. Don't just focus on what needs improvements. Recognize what's being done well too. This creates a more balanced, motivating message. And finally, make it a two-way conversation. Ask for their perspective. Seek to understand their challenges. Work together to find solutions. This collaborative approach builds respect and trust. In a world side, in a world of constant change and uncertainty, people look to leaders to make decisions, to chart a course forward. Indecisiveness breeds insecurity and doubt. Decisiveness, on the other hand, inspires confidence. This doesn't mean making rash decisions or never changing your mind. It means gathering the necessary information, considering the options, and then committing to a course of action. It means being willing to make tough calls even in the face of uncertainty. Once you make a decision, commit to it fully. Don't second guess yourself publicly. Don't waffle. If new information comes to light that necessitates a change in direction, explain your reasoning clearly. But avoid the trap of constant indecision. Remember, people respect leaders who can make tough decisions and stand by them. They trust those who can navigate through uncertainty with confidence and clarity. Something that's becoming increasingly important in our complex, interconnected world, the ability to handle ambiguity. The truth is, as a leader, you will often face situations where there's no clear right answer, where the path forward is foggy at best. How you handle these ambiguous situations says a lot about you as a leader. Do you become paralyzed with indecision? Do you rush to false certainty? Or do you navigate the uncertainty with grace and confidence? The key is to embrace ambiguity, not fear it. See it as an opportunity for creativity, for innovation. Be comfortable saying, I don't know, but let's figure it out together. This honesty, this willingness to tackle the unknown earns respect. It's about finding the balance between decisiveness and flexibility, between having a clear direction and being open to new information, between confidence and humility. Master this balance and you'll be well equipped to lead in our ever-changing world. The power of vulnerability in leadership. There's a common misconception that leaders need to be invincible, that they should never show weakness. But the truth is, showing vulnerability can be a strength. When you're willing to admit your fears, your doubts, your mistakes, it makes you human. It makes you relatable. It shows courage. And ironically, this vulnerability can make you appear stronger, not weaker. Who do you respect more? Someone who pretends to have all the answers, or someone who's honest about their uncertainties but committed to finding solutions. Someone who hides their mistakes, or someone who owns up to them and focuses on making things right. Vulnerability in leadership isn't about being weak. It's about being authentic. It's about creating an environment where it's okay to take risks, 
to make mistakes, to learn and grow, and that kind of environment. That's where innovation thrives. That's where loyalty grows. That's where respect is earned. The concept of servant leadership. This might seem counterintuitive at first. After all, aren't leaders supposed to be served, not serve? But the most respected leaders understand that true leadership is about serving others. Servant leaders put the needs of their team first. They ask, how can I help? Instead of what can you do for me, they focus on removing obstacles, providing resources, and empowering their team to succeed. This doesn't mean being a pushover or neglecting your responsibilities. It means understanding that your success as a leader is intrinsically tied to the success of your team. It means using your position not for personal gain, but to lift others up. When you adopt this mindset, something magical happens. People don't just follow you because they have to. They follow you because they want to. They respect you not for your title, but for your character. They give their best, not out of fear, but out of loyalty and shared purpose. In our increasingly globalized world, the ability to work effectively across cultures is becoming a crucial leadership skill. Cultural intelligence isn't just about knowing the do's and don'ts of different cultures. It's about being open to different perspectives, being able to adapt your communication style, and being willing to challenge your own cultural assumptions. It's about understanding that there's not just one right way to do things, that different cultural backgrounds bring different strengths, different ways of problem solving, different approaches to teamwork. Leaders with high cultural intelligence know how to bridge these differences. They know how to create inclusive environments where diverse teams can thrive. They know how to navigate cross-cultural challenges with sensitivity and respect. And in doing so, they earn the respect of diverse teams. They build organizations that are more innovative, more adaptable, and better equipped to succeed in a global marketplace. The power of emotional intelligence in leadership. IQ might get you in the door, but it's EQ Emotional intelligence, that will make you a great leader. Emotional intelligence is about understanding and managing your own emotions and being able to recognize and influence the emotions of others. It's about having empathy, being self-aware, and being able to build strong relationships. Leaders with high emotional intelligence can read a room. They can sense undercurrents of tension or excitement. They know how to motivate different personality types. They can diffuse conflicts before they escalate. They're also better at handling pressure, at staying calm in a crisis. They don't let their emotions cloud their judgment or derail their effectiveness. And this emotional steadiness, it inspires confidence. It earns respect. So how do you develop emotional intelligence? Start by becoming more aware of your own emotions. Practice mindfulness. Reflect on your reactions. Ask for feedback on how you come across to others. Then work on your empathy. Really try to put yourself in others' shoes. Listen not just to words, but to tone, to body language. Try to understand not just what people are saying, but why they're saying it. And finally, practice managing your emotions. This doesn't mean suppressing them. It means acknowledging them, understanding them, but not letting them control you. It means responding rather than reacting. As a leader, one of your key responsibilities is to foster an environment where continuous learning is not just encouraged, but expected. In today's fast-paced world, organizations that don't learn and adapt quickly get left behind. And the same is true for individuals. So how do you create this culture of learning? First, model it yourself. Be a lifelong learner. Share what you're learning. Be open about your own growth areas. Show that it's okay not to know everything as long as you're willing to learn. Second, encourage risk-taking and experimentation. Create safe spaces for people to try new things, to stretch themselves. Celebrate failures as learning opportunities, not just successes. Third, provide resources for learning. This could be formal training programs, mentorship opportunities, or simply time set aside for personal development 
Show that you value learning by investing in it. Fourth, recognize and reward learning. Not just results, but effort put into growth and development. This sends a powerful message about what's truly valued in your organization. And finally, make learning a part of everyday work. Encourage reflection after projects. Foster knowledge sharing. Create systems for capturing and disseminating lessons learned. When you create this kind of learning culture, you're not just developing more skilled team members. You're creating an adaptable, resilient organization. You're fostering innovation, and you're earning the respect of those who see that you're invested in their growth and development. Authentic leaders are true to themselves. They don't try to fit into some predetermined mold of what a leader should be. They know their values, their strengths, their weaknesses, and they're not afraid to show them. This doesn't mean oversharing or neglecting professional boundaries. It means being genuine. It means aligning your words and actions with your values. It means being the same person whether you're in the boardroom or the break room. Authentic leaders are also transparent. They share information openly. They explain the reasoning behind decisions. They are honest about challenges and setbacks. This transparency builds trust. It earns respect. But perhaps most importantly, authentic leaders are consistent. They don't say one thing and do another. They don't change their personality to fit the audience. This consistency makes them predictable, reliable. And in a world of uncertainty, this reliability is deeply respected. So how do you become a more authentic leader? Start by doing some serious self-reflection. What are your core values? What do you stand for? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Once you have a clear understanding of who you are, commit to being that person consistently. Be willing to be vulnerable. Share your journey, your struggles, your lessons learned. Let people see the real you. Because when you're authentic, you give others permission to be authentic too. And that creates deeper connections, stronger teams, and more genuine relationships. You remember, people don't follow titles. They follow people. Real people with real strengths and real flaws. So be real. Be you. That's the foundation of authentic leadership. Speaking like a leader, earning respect. It's not about being perfect. It's not about never making mistakes. It's about striving to be your best self every day. It's about using your words and actions to make a positive impact on those around you. It's about clarity, confidence, authenticity, empathy, and purpose. It's about listening as much as speaking. It's about leading by example. It's about continuous learning and growth. It's about serving others, being decisive, handling ambiguity, showing vulnerability, and practicing emotional intelligence. It's about creating a culture of learning, being culturally aware, and always striving for authenticity. And most importantly, it's about making a difference because true leadership isn't about you. It's about the people you lead. It's about the impact you have. It's about leaving things better than you found them.